You guys want to know about Turkestaron, and today is going to be the full explainer. That's right, this is the guide to Turkestaron, the full review of all the data we have on it. We've searched far and wide, gone as far back as the Soviet era, to get the data for you to understand what we know about Turkestaron. Now, normally I refer to my laptop on the side as a guide. Today I've pulled it out because we're going to be going through a lot of science today. I don't have it all memorized. And to be honest with you, it's quite a new topic for me. I don't normally get into the pseudo in between anabolic stuff. I normally don't really think it's worth the money. And that's why initially with Turkestrone, I honestly initially was like, hey, I don't really think that we should be spending our time on this. But then as Mike and our uh, research crew went through the full bulk of the data, and a few different companies started coming out with it more. We were like, all right, maybe there's something to look into here. And so basically the big point I want to get across here at the beginning of this video is the idea that some phytoectosteroids, the class of compounds that turkestrone is a part of, may deliver primary benefits of anabolic steroids, potentially with virtually none of the drawbacks. It sounds too good to be true, but that's what the preliminary research literature on the subject currently indicates. There are some points that we're going to go through that we don't know yet, such as bioavailability. And as with most new and exciting ingredients, there is also the topic of availability of the correct standardization. So we're going to talk about the type of standardization for these that is going to be the best for you as dictated by the current literature. I'm producing this video at the beginning of April 2020. Things may change if you're watching this video in the future. But as of right now, this video is going to serve as a review on everything you need to know about Turkestaron and how to get absolutely f***ing yoked using it. So here we go. We're going to start off with an introduction to phytoandrogens. Now, most of us are familiar with the concept of phytoandrogens estrogens, but we haven't talked very much about phytoandrogens here. Now, in foods like pine pollen and spinach, there are phytonutrients, which are analogous to testosterone. So, like testosterone, these are going to have effects on boosting libido, lean mass gain, assisting in the management of stress. And right now, one of the big phytoandrogens that has been making its way in the industry has been turkesterone. Now, we're also going to talk about ectosterone as part of this. Uh, these are kind of like the two big ones that are the big topics right now. However, what you're actually really going to see here is that ectosterone steroids are not really androgens, though they do have anabolic effects like androgens. As far as we can tell, they don't act on the androgen receptor. Again, as far as we know, as far as the current literature states, we did find one rather researched person in the industry that claimed that there was a study showing that it had an affinity for the androgen receptor. We were not able to locate any data showing that, and the bulk of the evidence that we went through only looked at estrogen receptors, so let's get a little bit further into that. So the first thing that you're going to notice about phytoactosteroids is that they are actually synthesized by plants from cholesterol, which is kind of interesting that plants use cholesterol. Any student of testosterone's ears will perk up when they hear that, because as you probably would know, our own testosterone is synthesized from cholesterol as well. So right away, we're in the right kind of hormone territory that we'd be expecting to be talking about, something that would be efficacious and helpful here. Now, the punitive health effects from phytoestrogens come from the fact that they are able to interfere with the actions of other estrogens by occupying the receptor and thus displacing those stronger forms of estrogen. And so, naively, we would probably expect the same thing for phytoectosteroids because of their anabolic properties, but we might be tempted to consider them androgens and to act on androgenic receptors. And that would have a problem in the system because if you are off-putting those androgens, then you're creating a dependency on these androgens. That's where a lot of the shutdown effects happen. That's why a lot of You'll have to end up on TRT after using SARMs, after using pro-hormones, after using different types of hormones that mess with androgen activity. But this is not necessarily the case because we found a very large body of research showing that the most well-studied phytoectosteroid, ectosterone, also known as 20-HE, it exerts its anabolic effects by occupying certain estrogen receptors. Now, they've got a really great quote from Parr in 2015, basically showing that only recently binding of ectosterone to the human estrogen receptor beta could be shown in cell culture experiments and induction of hypertrophy in C2C12 cells was shown to be mediated by the estrogen receptor beta activation. Now, different forms of estrogen get a bad rap in an age where there is a 
public health concern with phytoestrogens in uh, our diet in different compounds like, like plastic that we come into contact with. But estradiol and other mammalian estrogens actually do have masculinizing effects, and it is important to modulate that part of our systems. And so this is actually going to be seen in the research showing that the simulation of estrogen receptor beta even with an estrogen, can increase skeletal muscle synthesis. And so we should also think about what it means when phytoectosteroids, which have no significant estrogenic activity, occupy estrogen receptors. Theoretically, this should actually reduce the overall estrogenic burden of the body. And in fact, uh, rats that took phytoectosteroids do actually show lower serum levels of estrogen. So that theory does kind of hold up. Presumably, this is uh, because stimulating the estrogen receptors cause negative feedback, downregulating the production of endogenous estrogens. Perhaps the biggest advantage that we get with these over traditional anabolic steroids is that they don't interact with the androgen receptors. Supplementing with a phytoectosteroids will not negatively necessarily or has been shown yet to cause unwanted side effects that are typically associated with the usage of anabolic steroids. And so we're going to talk about the research here. We have both animal models and human studies. We're going to re- we're going to talk about human studies here, which is really exciting. Repeatedly showing that phytoectosteroids do not s- alter serum testosterone levels or any other aspect of the endocrine system in that negative fashion that we're worried about. When we talk about the research here, we're also going to talk about t- other types of phytoectosteroids. Turkestrone is just one type of this. And we're going to key in on it as we get through the research. We kind of start with a bit of a background on phytoectosteroids. And this is really useful because there hasn't really been a lot of research specifically on turkesterone, but there has been a ton on other phytoectosteroids, like ectosterone, uh, which we mentioned before, probably being the most extensively uh, studied. Soviet bodybuilders were actually suspected of using ectosterone uh, as a doping agent in the 1980s. In one study in 2019, researchers gave raps a a preparation of ectosterone and concluded that ectosterone had significant anabolic activities. It increased uh, muscle fiber size in the rats as well as IGF-1, which is a very important anabolic growth factor that bodybuilders will supplement, uh, you know, they'll inject exogenously. Being able to produce that more in your body with something as small as a plant steroid is kind of significant here. Now, the study actually showed that ectosterone decreased serum estradiol. We talked about that before. Estrogen went lower, and you could probably see that because it displaces estrogen off of the receptor, but it also has an anti-estrogen activity on the entire endocrine system. The researchers in this study were also able to corroborate the idea that phytoectosteroid action takes place in estrogen receptors because they were able to antagonize the action of ectosterone with an anti-estrogen drug but not an anti-androgen drug. Now in another animal model from 2015 researchers gave rats a variety of anabolic drugs alongside ectosterone and got to actually compare them. This is kind of one of the bigger studies that we're going to mention here showing the impact of these ectosteroids and the comparison of them to things that might be a little bit more relevant in this community. So ectosterone was given to them. They, They were also also given Dianabol, Antren, and Sarm S1 to compare what is going to happen across here. I love this variety of drugs here because these co- these compounds were able to be compared. You've got a very classic drug, Dianabol, D-Ball, used by a lot of bodybuilders in the 70s and 80s, 90s, until today. Very backed by research. You've got uh, <laughs> Estradiendione, uh, which is commonly seen as an oral trend, uh, and Sarm S1, which is a newer designer kind of drug that you know a lot of kids are really like in these SARMs, uh, but and then they definitely do work. But it's cool to see just different generations of these types of anabolic drugs being compared. The result, amazingly, is that ectosterone outperformed all of the traditional anabolic drugs. Rats were, who were given ectosterone saw nearly a twofold increase in the thickness of their soleus muscle, way above and beyond what the estradiandione, the uh, metha, methandiandone, and the SARM S1 were all capable of achieving. And this is absolutely remarkable. It's actually kind of crazy because these are super powerful anabolic drugs that like if you went into any gym and asked about any older guy that's been around for a while and understands or any researcher in this field would understand how strong these drugs are they're all banned by WADA and plenty of different federations and yet turkestrone isn't banned yet the researchers performing the study were conclusive enough and and felt strongly enough about this they actually concluded the paper by writing uh, quote with respect to doping prevention the high anabolic potency of 
believe ectosterone justifies its classification as an anabolic agent and therefore needs to be listed in the category S1 anabolic agents on the prohibited substances list of the World Anti-Doping Agency. Now, again, it's important to note this was not terkestron. This was ectosterone, a different phytoectosteroid, which is similar and sometimes found similarly in the same extracts. You'll sometimes find them together, um, which we'll talk about a little bit further as well. But it is worth noting at the end of a, you know, a fantastical uh, result like that, that that wasn't actually terkestron. But in 2019, we actually got into human research on collegiate athletes. Animal models are great. We do love seeing animal models. It's important. But when we start to talk about humans, that's where things get really freaky. Now, a team of German researchers set out to answer this question in 2019. They divided collegiate male weightlifters into four groups. A placebo-controlled group, a first ectosterone group, a second ectosterone group, and a control group. The placebo group and the two ectosterone groups all undertook the same regimen of barbell strength training, focusing on compound movements, and the difference between the ectosterone groups uh, was the size of the dose. The higher dose actually took four times the amount of the, uh, the lower dose. All of the training groups increased their one rep maximums on the back squat, bench presses. The effects of ectosterone on mass were similar. Uh, groups taking ectosterone gained significantly more muscle mass than the placebo or the control group. There's not a lot more to write about here. It's a very cut and dry st uh, study. Again, the researchers behind the study concluded that they should include ectosterone in anabolic agents in the WADA list. And that's kind of where we get into actual terkesterone. Speaking strictly, uh, terkesterone is a specific phytoectosteroid found in Ajuga terkestenica. Importantly, it is not the only phytoectosteroid in this plant. Ectosterone, among other ones, are also found in this plant. So if you're finding an Ajuga terkestenica extract, ideally, we'd like to see the standardizations of both terkesterone and ectosterone. With Project Hulk from Anabolic Warfare, which we're going to be talking about with this video, it is a 10% terkesterone extract. We also, we've seen the testing for that. We also know that there is ectosterone in that. It's not claimed on the label, so I won't be speaking to that. Many supplements marketed as terkesterone are not pure terkesterone. They are rather an extract of the plant, Ajuga terkestanica, and that extract contains also ectosterone, the phytoectosteroid that I just spent the last 10 minutes talking about as a background of phytoectosteroids getting into terkesterone. So clearly there's more to this plant than just the terkesterone. Terkesterone definitely is the popular name and hot phrase to talk about, but it's worth noting that ectosterone is probably going to be a big helper in that as well. In fact, there are probably eight different phytoectosteroids contained in this extract itself. There are literally hundreds of phytoectosteroids in existence, but discussing Really, all eight of these is probably beyond the scope of the video we're doing right now. In the future, if one becomes more important, we probably will key in on it as well. As we know from the discussion that we already got through, ectosterone is a powerful anabolic uh, and adaptogenic substance, and it should be pretty obvious that using an ectosterone containing extract of the plant rather than pure terkesterone isn't a bad thing. It's probably a good thing because we're still getting a efficacious dose of terkesterone plus that ectosterone. Now, the formula and structure to ectosterone is very, very similar. It's pretty much an analog of ectosterone. So really the question becomes, if ectosterone was able to beat out D-ball in a rat model, can terkesterone also deliver those types of results, and how are we going to see a benefit from both of those together? Well, in 1998, a study from the Uzbekistan Academy of Sciences, uh, researchers put two different preparations of terkesterone isolated from different parts of the plant, head-to-head -head with methandrostonolone, which is another form of D-ball. And the results from this were downright astonishing. Both preparations of terkesterone per performed as well as D-ball at increasing body mass and organ size of the rats that took them. However, the anabolic effects of terkesterone were greater than those of D-ball in rats. Now, D-ball, I have to say again, is a mainstay of bodybuilders, powerlifters, strongman athletes, a lot of different strength athletes or physique athletes. So if we're outperforming the anabolic effects of D-ball with a natural extract like this, it's clearly powerful. And that's about all that we have for data on, on the subject. It is worth noting that terkesterone research is still in its infancy. We've gone through a decent amount of science on it, but in terms of safety, we don't know a lot about it. We do have even one study that actually kind of disproved all of the ones that we just talked about and full transparent nature. I do want to talk about that a little bit. In one study, a researcher gave a group of elderly rats, they're 20 months old, equivalent to about 60 years in human age, a solution of 5.85% terkesterone and track changes in their muscle tissue over time. Uh, they were trying to 
offset the effects of age-related muscle loss, which is a little bit of a different topic than we're talking about. It's also a lower percentage than you're going to be getting on most in the market. You're going to be getting 10% on most. But the researchers found that compared to an age match control group, the rats that got the turkestrone showed no significant difference in the progression of sarcopenia, the age-related muscle loss. A lot of the times these studies are comparing the usage of an ingredient against a natural phenomenon like that's the opposite of what we're trying to offset here that's like the opposite of what the ingredient is trying to do so for focus you know we'll usually work with people that have focus issues or elderly patients with increasing muscle mass here we're talking about age-related muscle loss and there's a couple things to keep in mind here the study while where turkestrone outperformed d-ball was done in sexually immature rats so it very could well be that turkestrone and ectosterone have pronounced anabolic effects in young organisms but not old ones another thing to note is that this was done in sedentary mice and so the the mouse and human studies that showed anabolic activity and muscle tissue growth with turkesterone and ectosterone was using trained athletes or requiring muscle stimulation or resistance training for the effects to be triggered so we really can't say for sure again the data is really still in an infancy and we're hoping to see more coming soon with all the interest of it in the industry we're hoping that that will trigger some data being found or funded really it is no worth noting here that we have really no adverse effects caused by phytoactosteroid supplementation in the german study we can quote the researchers concluded that side effects are explicitly attributable to ectosteroid supplementation could not be demonstrated in 2020 they said uh, ectosteroids are regarded as non-toxic to mammals also no effects were seen after the administration of these two ectosteroids to bullfrogs or rabbits in 2003 a research review pointed out that ectosteroids have a very low toxicity they are not hypertensive and in spite of their anabolic action they would have neither antigenic nor oestrogenic or anti-oestrogenic effects but the absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence so be smart with this don't go overboard and a big note word of caution here get your blood work done Get it done frequently. Get it done before and after cycling this. I would check out things like free and total testosterone, SHBG, LH, estradiol, hematocrit, and red blood cell count, a lipid panel. It's not expensive to get this done if you have insurance, especially. And in the long run, it's going to be really important to have this data. If you're going through turkestrone now, if you're a serious athlete and you're eventually going to be finding your way into more serious areas of the sport, having a history of blood work is going to be really important. Believe me, I wish that I had started earlier so I'd have more stuff to compare to. If you want to get well tested, turkestrone there are a whole bunch on the market that we have seen uh we've seen t- testing for a few different brands uh today i'm really talking about uh anabolic warfare's project hulk they have a few different products that contain turkestrone that we've seen testing for uh you'll see us talk about these different blends of these ingredients coming soon but i wanted to really feature this product with a full feature on turkestrone and how the ingredient really works overall hopefully this is helpful informative educational we do have business affiliate relationships with a few different companies that sell turkestrone so that's important to note here i did get this bo- uh, bottle for free but i think that turkestrone is a growing uh ingredient that's interesting to learn about and probably helpful for us to put out content for others to understand. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. I'd love to talk to you about it. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching and have a great day.